Hi friends, David here from Learn Stage Lighting, and today we're gonna tackle one of those questions that we've gotten a lot lately because the LED landscape over the past few years has shifted. And there's more and more different types of LED fixtures out there, different combinations of emitters, uh, whether it's just red, green, blue, red, green, blue, white, red, green, blue, amber, red, green, blue, lime, lime, amber, cyan. There, there's so many different options nowadays. And a lot of people find it tough to make a good white. And, and truth be told, it's something I struggled with in the beginning too. And I want to show you my methods to making it happen. Let's dive in. Okay, so there's a little bit of ground to cover about why it's tough to make a nice looking white with LED fixtures. There's a lot of moving parts and a couple things that I think really kind of muddy up the situation. Okay, so with any LED fixture you've got, no matter what it is, uh, you may have, let's just take for example, this Volux Sysma Z4, it's behind us. And we're just gonna take it and find a better place on the wall right there so we can see it really nice. And when we bring that light to full, just as an example, okay, we're shooting in daylight on this camera. And on that light, it is like daylight, but it's more pink, okay? And this look of like a pinkish white is the thing that often makes people hate LED fixtures. Because across the board, across almost many, many LED fixtures, if you bring them to full, you get something like this, okay? And that can cause a lot of issues because then it gives people a really bad impression of LEDs. So why do they do this? Ultimately, if you take, say, for example, you just take, you know, this is, we'll pull out the white and just make this red, green, blue, okay? We get this pinkish looking white because this allows us to get all the colors at their fullest potential, right? Meaning that just red at full is as bright as it can be. Just green at full is as bright as it can be. Just blue at full is as bright as it can be. And when we add the three together, we don't really get a great white, okay? Now, you might be saying to yourself, I don't run into this in my venue at all. And if that's the case, you probably have fixtures that are calibrated, okay? So there are gonna be fixtures on the market, typically a little bit higher end, that have calibrated whites, so that when you bring it to full, you get something that looks really nice, okay? Like we just take this, and right now we're shooting for approximately daylight. I'm gonna minus blue just a little. And there we've got a white, looks really true, really white on camera. We're hitting about daylight there, perfect. Okay, and so as you can see from what I'm controlling here in Onyx, the percentage of the colors is vastly different. When you're in a calibrated color motor, you have a fixture that can do that. It can give you really good whites. However, then the maximum brightness potentially out of the red is only gonna be 61% of its potential. Now granted, there's more nuance to that. Like for example, if we look at, for example, Martin fixtures, like we've got a Mac one over there, we're going to take a look at in a few minutes. Um, a lot of times they've got algorithms and things in there that basically take red, green, blue channels, take that information and then break it down into the individual emitters um, in a way that is really not transparent to you. Like it just kind of happens right where it makes the best color it can. It, when you have full red, it's gonna give you that full red, but when you take white, it's gonna be a nice calibrated white. You know, it's not gonna going to have that pinkish hue. Um, it's gonna dial that back automatically. And that's really cool. But I realize that not everyone and not every situation, in fact, most that we work with, don't have the budget for kind of a high-end professional grade fixture like Martin that calibrates each fixture and has them all matching out of the factory, okay? So then what do you do? Well, it's actually maybe not as hard as you think. And so we want to walk through in this video some common types of fixtures and how to mix a great white on them. So one of the big mistakes that people make, for example, with just an RGBW fixture like this, is they will just take the white to full. Okay, like right here, Volux Sysma Z4 took the white to full. It looks nice on camera here, but looking at it in person, it's not all that bright. Okay, so... How do you mix a white on LED fixtures? Well, we have to dive into science a little bit here. So in our human eye, 
the portion that uh, is kind of the strongest receptor of color is green. We see green very vividly. And you go out there in the earth, all the good stuff out there, right, that naturally occurs, the plants, the trees, they're green. And our eyes, they are especially attuned to green and, and react really well to green. That's why there's a couple reasons where that fits into lighting technology, because one is that's where we get lime LEDs from and why they help make our whites look so much better. We'll get to that in a minute. But also that gives us a good first step for mixing a great color. Okay, so if we look here on camera, I'm just with a red, green, blue, white fixture, okay? I'm gonna first bring the white to full and then I'm gonna bring the green to full. Okay, those are my, that's my first two moves. In fact, what I usually do honestly is I'll just take them all to full and say, okay, how does that look? It looks a little pinkish bluish. That's kind of hard to figure out. However, if I take white and green to full and start with that, I say, okay, you know, this is a good starting point. Sometimes LED fixtures will need some, some minus green, but a lot of times they don't. And so then I'll start to bring my blue up. Okay. And I'm going to bring my blue up. Let's say we just bring it to about 50%. Then I'm going to start bringing my red up. Okay. Now it's at 50%. And at that level, it's actually not terrible looking. It's still a little greenish, but it's quite white. And so that's where I'm just gonna start increasing red and blue until I get a color I'm really happy with. So here, I'm starting to get in that zone where the white looks really good in person. We're obviously at a high percentage, which is good. We're trying to get the most brightness out of this white. Okay, when I look at it, it's a little pink. So of course, we're just gonna dial back red, okay? I dial that back till it starts looking a little blue, okay? And now I'm really in the ballpark of what looks good. As an aside here, a lot of house fixtures, like these are the Gamma Penthouse lights, big fan of these, we, we get these a lot for people. Um, I've got them in my own church, they're a great fixture. They have about half their LEDs in white and the other half in RGB, so the white's actually stronger but I use the same process. Um, my whites that I usually mix on these are, you know, full white, nearly full green, and then red and blue at some other percentage level that I don't remember. This is a good point to give an aside and say, what about color temperature control channels? Color temperature control channels can be great. However, they're not always great. So for example here, this one's actually upside down in this profile. I know I need to update. This allows you to dial in a white of different color temperatures, and that can be helpful if you're doing just white. However, on a lot of fixtures, if I go here to full blue and I have the color temperature control channel on, it does not go to blue until I kick off that channel and then it jumps. So this is an area where, again, that's something I've always liked about Martin since the early days of LEDs is their temperature channel doesn't snap between the, the, the temperature and the color itself. Now, the downside of this is if I'm in a Martin fixture, like we've got that Mac one over there, we'll get to that in a minute. And I go ahead and I, you know, dial it in say to, you know, 6,000 K. And then in order to get that true 6,000 K, I have to make sure everything is at full. All the colors, the LEDs are at full or else it's not that true 6,000 K. It's shifting every color into that space, but the colors all, so it's not quite as idiot proof. Um, I'm saying that as the idiot because you do have to have all the colors at full. Okay, so let's look at some other fixture types. Okay, so that was a red, green, blue, white type fixture. The process is gonna be similar through others, but let's go ahead this time to a, uh, let's, let's actually use the Volux Spectra 300 just for fun. So when we're mixing a white on a white source LED fixture, okay, that's a good place to go next. A lot of times you'll have a CTC wheel. So you've got a color temperature control here between a 7,000K and I believe a 2,700. Now, as multiple customers have noticed and I've noticed, um, when you get all the way to the warmer colors, it's still a little bit green in person. So a good pro tip there is to literally just go and do a little bit of magenta because magenta the opposite of green. And that warms it up a little, just makes it, gives you a little minus green, makes it really happy. Okay, now on to lime stuff. We happen to have here somewhere a 
a Martin Mac 1. By default, it gives you red, green, and blue and color temperature, and it moves that, and it basically decides how much lime to give you, okay? So when I work with the red, green, blue lime fixture, um, typically, and this works for the lime amber cyan stuff too, I take the lime or the mint and I bring that to full first. In the case of something like these Mac 1s, just gotta bring that up to full, then we'll find it. Man, those things are so fast. And we'll point it at the old wall, okay? So the beautiful thing about a fixture like this is they don't give you control of the individual emitters in most modes. You can in some modes, but you really don't need them. Um, so when I'm going to mix a white on this fixture, it really just takes a color temperature and all the colors at full. And then if I'm in a color like this yellow here, it is always going to shift with the color temperature control channel. And so that's a great option as well. But the biggest keys I think today for this video are just to remember when you're mixing whites on LED type fixtures, I pretty much always bring up the white channel or the lime channel first up to full, then potentially the green channel up to full and the red and blue to mix. Granted, every fixture is calibrated differently, so it's gonna be a lot different but hopefully these tips will help you get started to making better lighting with the lights you have or the lights that you're getting. Okay, if you're brand new to this, be sure to head over to learnstagelighting.com and grab our free guide on how to get started with lighting. You'll just enter your email. And if you're looking to add lighting to your setup, then above AVL, formerly Learn Stage Lighting Gear, that's us, is the place to get it. We want to be your equipment leader for all your audio, video, and lighting needs for decades to come. So if we can do that, head over to the site, add some stuff to your cart and request a quote, or just fill out the contact form. We love to help people and we want to serve you for years to come. If that sounds good, head over to aboveavl.com. We love to help. Have a great day. See ya.